glad that you guys are here. Wow, Kitty is also really excited for Vlogmas, aren't you? She's like, no, let me down. I'm out of here. <laughs> I should look good on your face. Cool. I get some that look like my safety glasses. You what? Yeah. I like that it's this weather today. <laughs> Believe her. <laughs> and I like this is Denver up there. You can see that from our hotel room. Oh, there's a unique love. I really don't see those at all in Texas. It's freezing. <laughs> it's not. Freezing. It's like 37. <laughs> Boogers have turned to icicles. <laughs> I'm wearing literally a flannel shirt. <laughs> I'm friends with a polar bear. <laughs> the day I realized we're friends from the Arctic. <laughs> so we're trying to find a dispensary. Oh, not, 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 not nope. for weed. It's for some CBD oil. <laughs> the innocent CBD oil. Medical benefits. <laughs> For the medical benefits. Medical benefits. We pass it? Uh oh, check the Googles. Googles. So it's probably like here. <laughs> it's probably like hidden inside one of these buildings in the basement. So it's like dark and dreary inside. That's what I think it's in. Oh, do we have to go into like this? It's either in there. 14th Street Mall. Oh, look at this. It's called U4. Okay, got it. Oh, I do get it. That's kind of cute. things for each different strain like there's tables all around the place and then at each table there was a cross I'm gonna jaywalk here and then on each table what? there was like six or seven little containers with different strands with like a strand in each one and like an iPad per strand and they literally the only thing that moved on the iPad was their logo so they could have just printed out like the stats about this strand and put it next to the little container. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's still people in prison for, for like 20 years. Violent drug offenses of just holding or selling marijuana. Um, so, it was an interesting experience. He scanned my license though, and I was like, oh, don't do that. Yeah, Colorado. <laughs> I get tested for work. 
You're not gonna get to you seeing your blood from getting your like smelling it. <laughs> your, but there's your like ID false scan. positives. I'm so worried about false positives. It wasn't even in the air. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe someone was like vaping in there. I don't know. You don't get <laughs> It's like they scan your ID, you're like, oh god, I was like, I right, my blood. <laughs> the government knows me now. <laughs> Sound like my mom. She's like, I think Google's listening to you. I'm like, this whole yeah, thing they are. A conspiracy, because I want them to think Andrew is a pothead. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a conspiracy ten years in the making. Finally got the legislation passed. The defense is like, open. Pretending to be my best friend for the long Pretending to be the best friend. <laughs> Spontaneously allowing this Denver trip to pop up. <laughs> that I chose a location. That you chose. My family's king. By an inception. <laughs> you were like secretly calling my mom, like, yes. change it to Winter Park. Because <laughs> my ass loves cold weather. <laughs> I can tell. This is like this fashion you <laughs> No what? judgment, but judgment. <laughs> Total judgment. <laughs> Oh, I like that you can see the look, look how much you're laughing. That's the THC working right there. <laughs> Breathing it in. Fumes. <laughs> that that place on lockdown too. Yeah, that security guard was like, do you remember the bouncer from last night? He did not give a fuck. <laughs> security guard? Total opposite. He's like breathing it in. See, he's probably high too from being in there. I think it's because they probably have like a lot of product and money and stuff in there. Oh, he's just like, like... This industry is worth a lot for them. Huh. Yeah, so... Two different people came up and were like, no filming. I was like, oh, I got it. <laughs> but it's so, no, we can't film. And I don't know if that's a state law or just there because they're like careful about what they have there. Uh, I don't know. We can all... To like Capitol Hill, the art museum, and a thrift shop. We'll find some snow boots. Oh, it's right out. Let me turn this off. This is a sold out. <laughs> so traumatized and everything that's sold out. It's like a little Dior exhibit. Yes. Come for your video. Yeah. Hi, can you next member? We're not members. No, we're not members. Not in a cool club. So I am at the Denver Art Museum on their sculpture deck and I'm actually sitting on these like chairs that are kind of creepy and it says it's like leg and armchair, concrete and steel, 1990. So and it's kind of a really cool view. Um, this way. Here, I'll go show it to you. My little Denver Art Museum, aka Dam. Stick around. But you know I love a good damn song. talk a little bit today about digital intelligence. I have done a little article for ASCE. I don't know if they've accepted it, but they've got a younger members portal that is coming out that is on the 2nd of January, I believe, is when it's being released. And so I they asked me if I would write a little thing up. It's like only 400 words about transparency, and I'm really big into transparency in the industry and calling out um, things as I see them um, that could be better. And so I wanted to make the article a, um, a talking piece about things that have happened at work that you haven't felt comfortable to talk about because you, you thought maybe 
it would stagnate your career or you know give you problems at work but that should be talked about and there should be a conversation of it and a narrative about it so that's what the piece is about it's the the fine line between transparency and self-preservation so protecting your career and what you want out of your career and it it's very important to me to talk about this because as women in the industry we experience a lot of sexism if it's blatant sexism maybe or uh, micro sexism people just assuming they can do something better than you so they're going to handle it for you or just always questioning what you're saying when they wouldn't be questioning a male colleague you know there are times when I'll say something and, and and people will push back and it's not until a guy stands next to me and says the same thing that they're like oh okay well you know well, um, that makes sense and it could be somebody who is who I am managing who says it but for some reason me being um, the woman in the space that it doesn't have as much weight and so I wanted to talk about that and start a conversation and uh, uh, hopefully they will accept it and it will be on the Younger Members portal, but I've, I've also linked it to a blog post of mine that I've done where it was maybe a year ago, no, it must have been two years ago I wrote this about some sex sexism that I had dealt with right when I started at my company that, I mean, as any sexism is, it wasn't malintentioned. He, he thought he he was just being a cool guy or uh, I feel like every time I've experienced it the people have had good intent and it's just come off poorly so um, I wrote a piece called don't get burned which was my response to the guy um, when he had sent me a text that said hey do you think I'm playing with fire trying to hit on this young female and all I, I just responded and said, don't get burned. <laughs> and he had accidentally sent the text to me instead of his friend. Um, so he was not expecting to get a text back from me. <laughs> or maybe he was. Maybe it was very intentional that he sent it to me and he was supposed to be like, oops. Or he meant to be like, oops, it wasn't supposed to go to you. Um, so yeah, I, I wrote a piece about that. And I've talked about that. And I've talked about a lot of... Um, microaggressions and sexism and things going on in the industry and how we need to be more inclusive and diverse and um, respectful of other people's um, ideas instead of disempowering them or looking down on them and really questioning our own bias when it comes to um, working in diverse spaces and so that's not what the, the advice is about today that's that's just sort of my mission when I am doing things like this or doing blog posts and my advice today is to start a conversation with your employer about digital intelligence training so your employer ultimately has policies about communications and what you can say and what you can tweet about what you can blog about and talk about on your Instagram and you and it's nice to make sure that your employer has policies that are protective of you and are protective of the profession. And it's not just about an image that that they've curated that that is prolonging this um, prolonging sexism and prolonging uh, prejudice in the workplace. So we really need to have conversations with our employers about their policies and encourage them to have a digital intelligence training session because if they're thinking about digital intelligence and they're thinking about transparency and what we're posting on the web and how we're protecting ourselves on the web then then they have a front seat position to um, th th if it's in their mind, it's in their consciousness and they have policies about it and they have been intentional about those policies and I think if they're intentional about those policies, they will come up on the side of protecting you as much as the company. And so if you get in a situation where your managers didn't like that you tweeted that somebody on your team was being sexist to you, then then you can point to the policy and say, hey, you know, I understand that, that you thought it was poorly done and that you wouldn't have done it yourself, but I'm a different generation, I'm a millennial, uh, 
these are the spaces that I'm used to navigating in and this is important to me to call out that something like this is happening and overall our corporate policy is okay with that um, so you have a little bit more of a leg to stand on if there is some pushback at the lower levels which in management they um, I've been hearing this word clay layer so the clay layer is the management that likes to do things how it's been done is worried about the bottom line is is worried about you know their numbers and not so much growing the profession and growing the professional and um, the clay layer is I mean it's not a term that that is that is good it's there's these this old management style that needs to be uh, revamped and modernized and so we see that a little bit at the more like local level is you know we've got these managers that are used to doing how things have been done and they don't have a an ear into what we're changing in the industry and what HR is recommending is the policies and so we just need to help educate them and um, yeah if we're gonna keep growing as an industry modernize and be okay with putting things up on the web and talking about sexism in in public spaces and it might not look good for your company but that's that's accountability so the more we're posting about it the more the company has a drive to change it and to make it better and make it more inclusive and diverse and make it uh, more of an environment that that people where people want to work and that's how we become better engineers because we can't engineer something by by not having women and not having minorities and uh, um, underrepresented people. We need the entire talent base working on the solutions to the problems in our modern day world. So we've got to start a conversation. We've got to be transparent. We've got to be holding each other accountable. And unfortunately, that falls to you as a young professional to hold your companies accountable and to start conversations with them. And you can use it as a, a way to build your leadership background. So if you bring it up to your company and they don't have a digital intelligence training, maybe they'll look to you to start it and you can step into that leadership role and you can um, help them formulate the training. And, um, and it would be really good for your career so you can get some leadership experience out of it. And uh, if people know that they can go to you for being, um, for helping to create a better work atmosphere and being more inclusive, that looks really good on you and really good for the company. And it, those are the people that people will want to work with. And that's a lot of getting hired and and doing well in your job is people want to work with you and they come to you. Uh, and there's a phrase we like to say like, "Be the seat." CEO of you or you're the CEO of you is so it like work on your brand be the person that people want on their team and inclusion and diversity and not it's a very fine line um, and it's difficult because you want to you want to bring up these conversations but you don't want people walking eggshells around you and not wanting to work with you because they think you're going to call them out so it's it's creating an atmosphere where everybody can have the conversation together about the diversity, about inclusion, about being in a really good workspace and enjoying working with each other. So yeah, that's my advice for today. Diversion, uh, uh, diversity and inclusion, digital intelligence, being true to yourself and transparent about what's happening and some of the things you're experiencing because if you're experiencing them, so are the other women, so are the other people at your your company and other offices and your office. Maybe they're not saying anything and maybe they're experiencing it a little bit differently than you are. And so they need somebody to bring it into the conversation. And so that's my advice for today. Happy Vlogmas and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.
<laughs> it looks so festive. Huh? It looks so festive. Yeah. <laughs> it's like German, no? Yeah, I think so. Like I, German, for sure. Like, it's like straight out of the Black Forest there. Huh? Yeah. Straight out of the Black Forest. Oh my god! <laughs> I'll cut it out. Let's just record everything. <laughs> I can say anything around you. <laughs> Hot apple cider. Thank you, sir. <laughs> what? I have no idea. <laughs> We also didn't make sure that they weren't alcoholic too when he was Oh my gosh, this is so good. It's so good. Mmm, it's so hard. Okay, so let's go to the back and see what's back there. Okay. Oh, huh? Cinnamon? That's just the apple? Maybe. They might have. Or do I just associate with cinnamon? I think so. Taste one and I don't know if it tastes good. Do you think the sauerkraut stew is vegan by any chance? No, I don't know. Potato pancakes! That's how you know it's a true German fare. The smoked salmon on cedar on the potato pancakes. And the little crystal ornament. I was going over for the goulash. I bet we have that too. Yeah, that's my first experience. The very first one? It should be like, 
No, it's like right over there. It had like the crystal glass rose on this side. Yeah. Or we can look at here. There's something chocolate. My mom would love it. Huh? My mom would love chocolate. Wait, am I going to see your parents? Me and my mom. <laughs> you know her weak spot. <laughs> the same as my weak spot and her dad's weak spot. <laughs> it's true. You inherited from somebody. Oh, that's really soft. Already called? Yeah, yeah. Where is it? <laughs> All of this chocolate. Oh, they have they have the They've got like little drill bits in their entrance too. It's so cute. Um, they get that. Would she like it though? It's like a small bit. Yeah, she wouldn't care. It's very cute. I wonder if they. You too. Card. Oh, the minimum is like eight. Oh, like like <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the chocolate's good. It's in fancy shape. Yeah, it might not be. <laughs> I have a question. Is this one 18 as well? Well, I have to see we used to have a thing like this that we set on our piano every Christmas and there was like a fake snow pad and you put on all the sleighs and the houses and the churches and like the fake ponds. Those are cute. Yeah, they're so Market, and I've got to do a bunch of work because I wasn't able to do it this weekend and I want to make sure that we dotted our I's and crossed our T's on one of these reports and get it over to somebody else who uh, I think is working tomorrow and so I want to make sure she has it so she doesn't end up duplicating what I did by hand when I was on the plane so um, I'm gonna go and put all my edits online, upload it, and work on my vlogmas, and then go to bed. And tomorrow is Christmas Eve, so it should be fun. My parents are coming in tomorrow, and my brother, and I'm going out to Nature Park. So I will see you guys there. Good night.